Shocking new footage from last year's Norfolk Southern train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, has been released. President Biden is set to make his first visit to the town today, one year after disaster struck. One Ohio man says local and federal governments have been ignoring the environmental and health issues of the controlled chemical burn. Dr. Rick Chai is a chiropractor from East Palestine who's been tracking the chemical runoff in the town's waters and is running for Congress. He joins us now to tell us more about his campaign and what he expects from President Biden's visit today. Dr. Chai, thanks for joining us. Let's start with the with the president's visit, because this is now a year in the making. Um, he has refused to visit until now. At this point, what can he even offer the residents of East Palestine? OK, and then before I answer that, I want to say my campaign page is rickchai.com. That's T-S-A-I. And then uh, on Facebook, Dr. Rick Chai for Congress. Um, I think a lot of residents are getting a little tired of uh, people using us kind of like uh, cheap jewelry to dangle or kind of bling to wear around their neck. Uh, when the media leaves and they leave uh, after getting their photo ops, nothing happens here. Uh, we've got not one penny or one uh, bottle of water from the federal government. Uh, the EPA lies and says they can find no evidence of chemicals. I was on a uh, talk show with uh, NPR, with uh, the also the, uh, uh, the head of the uh, Ohio EPA. She said they can find no evidence of chemicals here. I took the media down to the creeks last night, uh, two miles down from the crash site in the park where children play. I dig dirt in the bank and chemicals just use out of the bank. Uh, I'm walking through the creek. Chemicals are oozing around my feet. Um, it's I, they're either they're either hiring the most inept buffoons at the EPA or there's something nefarious or criminal going on here. And I know what I believe. So you work in wellness currently while also being on the campaign trail. How, what have you seen as the impact on most everyday people's wellness following the controlled chemical burn? I'll talk about two things real quickly. Myself, I was seriously ill three times from the creeks. That's why we wear uh, an Avon respirator, military mask, and military gear. Um, welts on my body, rashes where the water would splash on me, uh, burning eyes, ears, uh, not ears, but nose and throat, nasal cavity, uh, chest. Uh, yes, diarrhea uh, nonstop for about four weeks when you breathe those chemicals in. Uh, rashes are still common uh, with patients, uh, headaches, um, sore throats, just illness, that, that chronic illnesses that a lot of my healthy patients didn't have before. When it rains here or when there is a fog, it almost smells like an open can of paint. It smacks you right in the face. And I don't walk through town saying, hey, what's it smell like today? You know, my mind is on other things. And all of a sudden you just hit with this horrible chemical smell. Uh, it's still highly contaminated here in our waterways, and uh, who knows what's still in the soil. We see now uh, residents from East Palestine try to step up and help out each other in lieu of the federal government's assistance. At what point did you decide that you wanted to run for Congress to try to make a difference? So a uh, uh, just before Christmas, you start walking around like you're a kind of a zombie in a catatonic state because you kind of just give up. You prove uh, the EPA, the CDC, you prove these entities wrong, uh, but nothing ever happens. There's no ramifications. A donkey that you dangle the carrot and the stick in front of needs a bite of that carrot once in a while or it just gives up. And that's kind of how I and other residents felt. Bill Johnson, a, a Republican, gave up his seat uh, just out of nowhere to take the presidency at YSU. I came home one night right after work. Uh, my wife was cooking dinner. She didn't even say hello. She turned to me and said, you need to run for Bill Johnson's seat. Thought for a minute. And I said, I will. And if you've seen that movie Shawshank Redemption, where Andy Dufresne, he's carving his initials in the, uh, the wall and a piece of failed concrete comes out, you see his face and he realizes there's a way out. And when I win this, there's going to be a way out because I'm not going to shut up about East Palestine. But I will fight, D6, for all of you, just as I fought the CDC, the EPA, Norfolk Southern here as well. And I have a lot to lose. So... Listen, I've done pretty well in life. I don't need money or friends. Uh, I didn't know what the ramifications were for speaking out, but there's an injustice here. And this is a microcosm of what's going on in the world and nation today. Uh, the deceit, the lies, the corruption, 
um, I'll fight for the entire D6 and I'll fight for the entire nation when I'm in Congress. I'm going to knock people on their ear. I'm curious, have you seen any updates on Norfolk Southern potentially having a settlement with the residents of East Palestine and the surrounding communities? Have you seen any movement on that? No, I think they're just waiting for the lawsuits to play out. And who knows with class action suits, um, you know, people may get $1,500 10 years from now. And we've got people displaced from their homes, people down at the crash sites that don't want to be there because of the contamination. It's just criminal what happened here. When the EPA was so proud, they were the Ohio EPA is bragging about them being here two hours after the uh, derailment. Hey, we were here two hours after. Why in your initial report then did you to write we witnessed Norfolk Southern laying tracks over contaminated liquid and soil. And then they ran their train over trains over that for months, pounding those chemicals into our land. So I believe the EPA is just as uh, responsible here for this criminal act as Norfolk Southern. But no, Norfolk Southern probably has a great playbook. Um, they know that this is going to take years in court. Uh, those people at the crash site should have been bought out. In Congress, you should have given these people low or no interest loans at the very least so they could get out and those, those loans should not have to be paid back until these poor people uh, sell their existing homes, even if they can, because people can't pay two mortgages. People want out. I would think there should be a congressional investigation as well into the federal response to this, because in addition to what you just laid out, it also took 10 days for the Transportation Secretary, Pete Buttigieg, to even address this situation publicly, let alone go visit. He didn't even get there until after the former president, Donald Trump. Um, is this something that you would pursue if you were elected to Congress? When I get elected, not if, but when, there's going to be a lot more TDS. That's Trump and t a Chai Derangement Syndrome. <laughs> so uh, President Biden is coming, I believe, just because it's an election year and he has to. In fact, the uh, Secret Service was here because he's going to be about uh, 30 yards from my office. Um, he, there was no reason for him to come. He was just forced to, basically. Uh, so it, it, Trump was here right after. And people might say, uh, hey, that was a stunt. Of course, it wasn't a stunt to me because I believe he really cared. But whatever it was, he came and our sitting president did not. Yeah, the whole situation's a bit of a mess. I want to go back to the just the days that this was unfolding. After the derailment, there was this rumor that the reason they had to burn the chemicals that were on the train was because they would explode, because temperatures, if they got too hot, would explode and it would endanger the surrounding communities. There were subsequent investigations that that actually wasn't the case. And the reason that there was a, a controlled burn is because it was cheaper for Norfolk Southern. So I think a, a congressional investigation into the corporations makes sense as well. I'm curious, are there still conversations in the community uh, about what happened that day? Is it widely reported among residents of East Palestine that this was an unnecessary chemical burn as well? Hey, no. And that temperature was going down uh, well below uh, safe levels when they blew it up. There was never any polymerization. Uh, vinyl chloride, the polymers, when they start st sticking together, that is what makes PVC. Uh, they were supposedly afraid that it was going to uh, bind together and muck up the valves. Uh, Oxyvinyl said that's just impossible. That won't happen. All the shrapnel, of all the shrapnel obtained, there's not one bit of polymerization, no evidence of that. Um, so it was just uh, time and money, I believe. And um, so the residents know, unfortunately, it is horrible here. It is, this town is fractured. There's fighting so bad. If the entity that caused this stepped away and the government did the cleanup, that would be one thing. Then people would probably still be mad at Norfolk Southern. But Norfolk Southern's playbook is they came in, they're dangling gifts, uh, carnivals, fireworks, the promise of hotels and things coming in, a $25 million park in a town of 4,000 people. Who ever heard of that? So you've got the one faction that says, shut up, don't show the chemicals in the creek or shut up about the, the contamination because you're going to ruin it for us. Uh, Norfolk Southern uh, isn't going to want to do the, you know, they're helping us. Don't, don't mess it up. Then the other side is worried about their health. We don't care about the money. We care about our health or at least do things simultaneously. Move these people out that want to move and go ahead and build your $25 million park if you want. Sounds like extortion to me. All right, Dr. Rick Chai, thank you so much for joining us. We'll continue to follow your campaign. Thank you so much, both of you.
And D6, vote Rick Chai. I will fight for you.